out. From CBC Vancouver on this Friday afternoon in the last half hour of the day and of the week come to that, we have The Mystery Project and the new series of Peggy Delaney Mysteries written by James W. Nichol. Peggy Delaney is a newspaper columnist, and by the very nature of her work, which is, after all, investigative, she often comes into contact with mysteries that need solving and people who are leading troubled lives. Now, this episode is called Tough in the Corners, and in it, the dead body of a homeless man starts Peggy on a search that leads to the rarefied home atmosphere of a wealthy NHL player and elements of horrific history. Kyra Harper stars as Peggy Delaney. Hello there. You've reached Peggy Delaney, Toronto Tribune. If you have something confidential you want to pass on, just leave your name and number. The walls have ears. I'll get back to you. If you're calling to give me fulsome, unqualified praise for my columns, feel free now. If you're calling to scream at me, fascist, communist, cop-loving, cop-hating, pro-lesbian, anti-lesbian, pretend anti-establishment, crypto Bay Street swamp pig, go for it. After all, this is a quasi-democracy. It is truth. Hello there, this is uh, Dick Chesterfield from ACF returning your call. Thanks a ton for your interest, but as you probably know, Tommy Wells prefers to remain behind the scenes when it comes to his charity work. That's just the kind of young man he is. Oh, however, he did want to mention that he's an avid fan of yours and never misses reading your column when the lease are in town. So, again, uh, sorry to disappoint, and uh, thanks so much. Yeah, sure. You sound happy. I was just checking my messages. I thought I might have a different angle on this gift story, but I guess not. This gift story? Yeah. I found this homeless guy frozen to death under the Garden of Expressway a couple of days ago. Oh. Stiff at the board in a sleeping bag under some blankets. That's awful. Yeah, tell me about it. <sighs> I was standing near ordered by our new managing editor to write about this guy. That's your second coffee, isn't it? I guess so. How come? You're always saying coffee's unhealthy. And that's about your fifth cigarette this morning, isn't it? So, anyway, I thought if I have to write about it, at least I can come at it from a different angle. I was trying to line up an interview with Tommy Wells. He does a lot of work with the homeless. He's a hockey player. He's cute. You seem to have a thing for hockey players. Just one. Your dad. And on our first date, he didn't say he was a hockey player. He misrepresented himself. Why? <laughs> because he thought I'd think he was dumb. <laughs> and then now the cop. Look, Amber. I've been doing some thinking. And the truth is... Uh, I'm not interested in getting involved with someone right now. So, the next time I see Carlos, I'm going to tell him that he's a nice guy and all that, but it isn't going to work out. So, we... we no wonder you've been in such a bad mood lately. I thought you were the one in a bad mood. Oh, uh, are, are you doing this for me? Because you know, I don't care for who you go out with. No, no, it's for me. I've got you to myself for less than four months now. I want us to be together, just the two. Then how come I feel like you're only doing this because of me, like I'm some kind of head case or something? Because I was thinking, I'm, I could go home early, and then, you know, I could come back in June and write my exams or something. Oh, God, no, don't. Don't even think that. Okay? I just... I don't want to be in the way. That's fine. You have a life, and I have a life. Everybody has a life, and it's not the end of the world. If, if you went home, it would be. The truth is, I don't know how to be a mother. I think I've established that over the years. But it doesn't mean that 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 you're not important because I love you. Okay? But I feel so stupid. I mean, I know that you can 
love me and you can love someone else like Carlos at the same time. I, I know you can, but I just don't feel like you can. You know? Yeah. I know. Whew. I need a hug. Do you need a hug? No. <laughs> Hard? Hey, Peggy. How's it going? Yep. I hear you're featuring Tony Wells on the back page next Saturday. Interviewed him yet? Photo session at noon. Meeting at 2. His place. Ah, Willie, do me a favor. Let me tag along. Why? Just want to throw in a couple of questions. When the conversation lags, you know, discreetly. What kind of questions? Well, lots of the Leafs do charity work now and then, right? But this guy, when he's not playing hockey, word is he helps out with the First Nation Street Patrol almost full time. He's part native himself, comes from some little pizant reservation up on Georgian Bay called uh, Ghost Hill. And he helps out with the homeless. That's interesting. Admirable. He'll open up a little. Maybe there's a column there. This is about hockey. And God is in his heaven and all is right with the world. I said I'll be discreet. How long have you been in this business, Willie? Four years. Well, this is how it works. We do favors for each other. All the time. Hi there. Willie Watson, Trip Sports. Right on time. Come on in. And this is... Hi. I'm just guessing, but I don't think you're Tommy Wells. No, no one is representative. Dick Chesterfield, ACF. Oh... You're Peggy Delaney, aren't you? I think we met on your voicemail. I think I said no. But it wasn't clear. No to what? There's Willie. Tommy! Great to see you again. A great game last night, Tommy, except... You uh, blew a two-goal lead. Yeah. yeah. Good to see you, too, Matt. When are you going back on the road? I know, I know. I hate not traveling with the team. And you are? Peggy, Peggy Delaney. Delaney. Oh, Okay. Fine. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, too. I write a column for the trip. I thought you were a big fan of mine. That's what Dick here says. Oh? It's just a mix-up. She wants to interview you about your charity work, Tommy, and I said you preferred to keep that part of your life private. Well, just a couple of brief... It is private. It's just something I choose to do. I don't have to prove I'm a good person to anybody. No, of course you don't. Everything in this business is show business. Everything's product. You're advised to sell yourself back to the fans and position yourself for endorsements. But some things should be kept private. That way you still know who you are when you wake up in the morning. Right. I certainly couldn't agree more. Oh? I'm not going to have my photo taken, smiling in some soup kitchen or bending over some poor wino somewhere like he was a trophy. No. Except soup kitchens. All these other programs, they don't run on good intentions alone, do they? If you do these things, and the public knows it, and they identify with you, then you become an effective fundraiser too, don't you? Publicity is not always a bad thing. Uh, are you going to the optional skate this afternoon? Yeah. Then let's talk hockey. There's only so much time. That sounds good to me. the Don Valley. You could see forever. You could see Buffalo. Yeah. How much do these kids make? Depends. Tommy Wells, so-so player, traded in a three-player swap with the Islanders two years ago. Third-line winger, tough one he has to be. 1.2, maybe. 1.2 million? Yeah, he's nothing special. God. Get his autograph? No. I was lucky they didn't throw me out. I asked him what his feelings were around that native guy they found frozen to death the other day. Yeah. And he said, ask the politicians what their feelings are. And that was that. My case. What? The guy under the bridge. I went down there. The morning they found him. It's my case. Okay. No I've got to write this stupid column somehow. Maybe that's my angle. I'll interview you. I don't think so. Hmm. 
Hello. Uh -huh. Well, it's just... Well, uh... I like your tie. Who picked it up? I did. When you were with your wife... Yeah, he's a good guy. He rides with us lots of nights. Some people recognize him, talk to him. Faces light right up. Mine would have, too. He talked to me. I understand you saw this Joe Smith about one in the morning, the night he died. Mm, yeah. Under the expressway, down in the culvert, covered over with some old boards. We got him to sit up, drink a bit of hot chocolate. He seemed okay. Why didn't you take him to a hospital? Well, they're all full. We take the frostbite cases into St. Mike's. Better to sit in the emerge all night than outside. So he crawled back into his hole when you left. That's right. He was found lying half outside. Well, that's how that truck driver noticed him. He was drunk. Probably tried to go somewhere. Passed out. Not that he had anywhere to go. No. Tommy asked me if I knew his name, too. Oh? Yeah. He was there, helping us out. Andrew LaSalle. How'd you find that out? Lifted fingerprints off his corpse and checked our files. Last offense was in 84. Got 10 years. Served six. For what? Rape. He raped a little girl. Oh. He was from out west somewhere. Moved into Ontario about 20 years ago. At the time of this offense... He was renting a room near Dundas and Sherburne, living in a house with this Chinese family. He attacked their daughter. Oh, God. Then, he skipped the city. But he'd been receiving welfare checks. And in the past, they'd been mailed to a few reservations around the province. Believe it or not, he was a ladies' man. Hmm. He'd talk someone into taking him home, and then he'd live off them for a while. Grassy Narrows, Big Stick, Ghost Hill. They figured at the time... He wouldn't be stupid enough to go back to anywhere he'd been before. He wasn't. They found him four months later, staying with someone on the Six Nations Reserve near Branford. Carlos, did you say Ghost Hill? Yeah. Why? Just making notes. That's what I thought you'd said. Jesus, what are you doing here? I saw you come in. This is the men's washroom. Couldn't you wait? No, I couldn't. Tommy Wells, tell me what you know about him. Does he live alone, or does he have a living girlfriend? What about his family? How many? Where do they live exactly? Does he ever go back to that place he came from, that ghost hill place? He has the best plus minus on the lease. Pardon? It was pretty clear, at least to me, that Tommy didn't appreciate you being at my interview. Can't you take a hint? And besides, I don't want to jeopardize my relationship. Hell up. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Now you... Shut up! What team are you on? Do you think you play for the Leafs? You're on my team, Willie. My team. I should knock your head off. Where's your loyalty? To a teammate. I never thought of you as a... Look, I am going to write a really gushy column about that dead guy under the bridge. And I'm just going to mention Tommy Wells in passing. He'll love it. But I need some background. I want to be accurate. I'm a professional. I thought you were, too. There's nothing to know. He doesn't have a steady girlfriend, as far as I know. He more or less stays to himself. And his family? I think his mother died a couple of years ago. He took a game off to go to his funeral. And he has a sister. Oh? Yeah. Um, Joanne. She's... It's not quite right. Something developmentally handicapped, something like that. He's really good to her. She lives in this home. It, it's right down the street from Tommy. Uh, that's why he lives up there. Do you happen to know the name of this place? Where she stays? No. No, no, no. Don't go there. Tommy wouldn't like that. I'm not going to go there. It's just background, okay? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, something like uh, Cleo's home? No, uh, Clara's home? Uh, it's named after somebody. Hello there. 
Welcome to Claire's home. Can I help you? Yes, hi. Um, I'm Peggy Delaney. Oh, yes, of course. Um, I read your column all the time, Miss Delaney. Uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> oh, I'm Grace Harold, managing director. Hi. I'm supposed to meet Tommy Wells here. He wanted me to meet his sister. Oh? Well, that's strange. He didn't mention anything to me. You're kidding. Oh, well, you must have forgotten. Hockey player. Anyway, I'm about a half hour early, as it turns out. But since I am here, well, I might as well say hello to Joanne in the meantime. I looked at my appointment book. For some reason, I thought it said two, but it was two days. <laughs> I do that all the time. Normally, of course, we do require the family's permission for visitors we don't know. My mug's in the paper three times a week. Uh, yes. Well... Why don't we go upstairs and say hello, then? Hello. Hi. This is a friend of Tommy's, Joanne. Tommy's coming to see you this afternoon. Is he? Oh, good. Well, he said he was. I, I don't know. Tommy plays left wing on the third line of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He has ten goals and five assists. That's mm -hmm. really good on the checking line. He leads the team in plus and minuses. So I've heard. Joanne's got scrapbooks going back forever. Hmm. He's a great player. He gets into fights, but only if someone makes him really mad. <laughs> he lost he lost three teeth in juniors one night. He's had his uh, nose broke twice. He yeah. had a uh, hundred and twenty three stitches and a broken leg. But he did that scheme. Oh. Are you older or younger than Tommy? I'm three years older. Tommy is twenty Seven, January 18th. I'm 30 years old this July 12th. That's on a Sunday this year. Tommy always takes me out on my birthday. He's a terrific brother. Isn't he, Joanne? He's the best. He took me to St. Petersburg in Florida once. He stayed on the beach. Mm. We were on the 21st floor. <laughs> um, Joanne, I'm interested in what it was like for you when you were growing up. Do you go home at all? Do you go up to Ghost Hill? Joanne? What's the matter? I'm sorry. Did I say something? Uh, did I upset you? We don't go back to Ghost Hill. Tommy and me. I won't let him. No, I won't let him. Homicide. Detective Carlos Abel. I'm not available right now. Leave a message or press one from Sergeant Best. Thank you. Hi, it's me. If I don't call you by 1.30 tonight, will you look for me at Tommy Wells' place? 720 Dawn Mills. Paint off number five. Here. I thought you might be later. It's only half past twelve. Not much. I'm going to the bars after a game. Too bad you lost. Too bad you talked to my sister this afternoon. That wasn't nice. Well, no one's ever accused me of being nice. Now, I'd like to talk to you about all the hours you've put in since coming to Toronto... Out on the mean streets, night after night, walking the alleys and hostels. Oh, get it. But it's almost as if you were looking for someone, isn't it? Is it? Found him, too. Living in a hole under the expressway. Andrew LaSalle. And he didn't die of exposure, did he, Tommy? Would you like to come in? Okay. It takes me two, three hours to unwind after a game. No, thanks. Did you know Andrew LaSalle was convicted of the rape of a little Chinese girl here in Toronto? No. I won't fall asleep until four. Sometimes I won't fall asleep at all. Doesn't surprise me, though. Want a drink? No, thanks. 
I knew he was living here, on the street, a wino. A friend from Ghost Hill saw him and told me. He lived with my mother for a while. When my sister and I were little kids, my mother wasn't too careful sometimes. Uh huh. One night, she got mad about something. Left us alone. Alone with Andrew Lassell. Uh huh. I was planning to kick him to death. I bought steel toe boots. They're in that closet right over there. Rain pants too. Kick him in his head, and kick him until the snow was red, and I was red up to my knees. They even knew where this dumpster was, full of garbage bags, where I could hide the boots and rain pants afterwards. It's almost fun. What was? I drove back down beside the expressway about 4:30 in the morning. Parked my car behind this factory, and I saw these two guys. One big guy was sitting on his back. He had the bastard's head pulled back, like he was breaking the neck of a fish. You know? Yeah. Jumping all around, snow yelling, "Choo choo, choo choo, steal my boots!" They stripped off his boots. And they ran away. My boots were still clean. I walked over to him. Andrew Lassell was dead. Maybe you could leave me and my sister alone now. I don't blame you for hating him that much, you know. You were right about a lot of things, but you were wrong about one thing. What was that? My sister. She tried to pull him off. Andrew Lassell raped me. Folks, I'm in jail. Found them both under the Bloor Viaduct. Living in a lean-to made of packing crates. Good. The big one's got bite marks on his hand. The little one is wearing an almost brand new pair of boots. Hmm. With Andrew Lasalle's fingerprints all over him. Not too bright. I know. So, do you have enough to convict him? Lasalle bled a little from his nose. There's blood and probably saliva on the big one's coat sleeves. With DNA testing, probably. Then Carlos. Can you forget what I told you about Tommy Wells? You don't need him as a witness, do you? No. I love you. In what way? In every way. Thanks for coming up to his apartment building. I'm waiting outside for me. Thanks for not getting yourself bumped off. Okay. listening to Tuck in the Corners, the newest in our series of Peggy Delaney, written by James W. Nichols. Featured on the cast, Tyra Harper as Peggy, Katerina Scarsoni as Amber, Jonathan Fisher as Timothy Wells, George Bruza as Detective Carla Shabo, Derek Boyd as Dick Chesterfield, Greg Spottiswood as Willie Watson. And as well, you heard Warren Stain as Peter Longboat, Ian Johansson as Grace Harold, and Jennifer Podensky as Joanne Wells. The music was composed by Milan Kimlicka, and conducted by Ray Parker. The recording engineer was Dario Grandich, sound effects by Matt Wilcox. Colleen Woods was the associate producer, and the coordinating producer is Barry Morgan. The program is produced and directed in Toronto by Bill Howell, who is the executive producer of the Mystery Project. And that is all for the roundup for this week. Uh, thanks to my colleagues, to Rosemary Allenbach, Ross Bragg, Mary Ellen Robitai, and Ainsley Vogel. Alan Neal is going to be here next week. I'll be taking the week off to do who knows what.